What's up, fellas? What we're looking at here is an electro winding machine uh, and an electro refining machine. And this video is for Basil and Naji. And the experiment that we ran this time involved stratification. So that's what this test was all about. And what we did is let the machine run for 60 hours without doing anything to it. I needed to know what happens if you do this, and we learned a lot. But one of the most valuable pieces of information that we learned is the ability to stratificate metal. Okay, Basil, so you remember this picture that I sent you on your phone. I want you to take a look at something very interesting. I, I had to try this. I just I stopped everything and sought to answer this question. Okay, here on this cyclone, a stratification has taken place during a, I guess you could say, a failed experiment. But some very valuable things are being learned in this experiment. But I want to show you what has happened. I hope you can see this, but clearly we have on the bottom a gray sludge layer. Then we have a copper layer. Do you see that? Then we have the brown iron oxide or whatever that other stuff was we were generating. A layer on top of the copper. And okay, we're going to try a camera with its own light. You see that? We have a definite stratification. Okay guys, now obviously if we minimize the cross-sectional area of the collection zone, say for instance in a graduated glass cylinder or a sight glass that is two centimeters in diameter, the interface between the, the two stratas will be drastically decreased, the, uh, the actual volume of the metal that will have to be flushed out into a separate dish. So though this isn't the best example, you can see that the plausibility of the idea is definitely there. So it's worthy of further testing. Ways to I'm going to stuff. You can see this is a very gentle stream of smaller cyclone easily when we do the electro winding off of testing. There. But this stratification clearly shows we have a bottom anode layer basket of is anode definitely going to help us possibly out. some 304 so stainless just steel powder spray test because of the low grade the anode part. we used for testing. Or you can increase the then acid levels to ensure that stuff stays dissolved copper layer. This is the copper powder that started to produce when the anode active surface area fell behold or fell below the plating threshold. And on top of that, we have a possibly iron rich nickel slash copper powdery substance. So the stratification is working and separation will be easy. Okay, we can see here that a gentle stream of water is able to very easily knock away this passivation layer. This layer just can't conduct electricity very well at such a low voltage. So a high turbulence inside the anode or analyte container would definitely wash this away. And we've got some other suggestions. So that can happen for a couple of different reasons. One being it's highly contaminated material and there's just so much anode sludge in there that we need some type of cleaning action. Now, Delicious De Blair mentioned the idea of vibrating the tanks to shake the material off, which may be better than my idea, which came from that suggestion, which was to use ultrasonic transducers in the bath to constantly blast off any residual. I believe that may cause uh, excessive copper content in the anode sludge though, so we'd really have to be careful what power setting we used. Um, let's see if I can find. This was that long slab bar. The first ingot we made, a tremendous amount of that got digested. Okay guys, now that is the ingot that we are looking at right there on the bottom. You can see how much it's been dissolved. And another reason why what we see took place is for the simple fact that I did not do anything to the electrolyte levels during operation. This weighed 151 grams when we started, guys. 
I, this is the first bar we ever poured, so I won't ever forget that. And it now weighs 42 grams. So uh, pretty good uh, digestion on that. So my thinking is we're going to want to stick with pieces about this size at a minimum because this grain material is going to passivate a lot easier. It won't be as easy to knock the, the stuff off with high flow. If you look here, there's hundreds of these particles in here, okay? So if we take this large handful of ingots, there's like, we're gonna end up with seven little tiny pieces eventually. We're never gonna let it get that low, but at least now we don't have the problem of this aggregate. We're Okay, so here we can clearly see some nodules and some areas that are very shiny. Take note of those little round beads on the top of these, uh, or I guess the bottom of these little pyramids. See that little round spot? Something's going on there that we find out here later. But you can see here, occasionally we come across some fairly shiny areas. I accidentally covered that one up, but you see that? So a lot of this stuff was digesting all the way down to the end but it definitely needs washed out. We need some kind of wash out of this stuff just to kind of help it along a little bit. Okay guys, and the third reason that we started powder production later on in the process is because the active anode surface area undergoing electrodialysis has shrunk, thereby decreasing the anode to cathode surface area ratio, which is very important. Whether or not you produce a powder or a plate depends on the anode to cathode ratio. So over time, as this burns away, we are end up with less anode, so to say, even though the basket is still kind of full, we've got a situation where our anode is seemingly shrinking. So to produce powder, we need a high cathode area. And to produce plate, we need a low cathode area. So if our anode is shrinking because of passivation, you saw how only small parts are still shiny? That means only that little small part was an active hot spot. And the cathode in relation to these small shiny areas, uh, the surface area ratio is huge. It's like 180 to one. So that is the third reason we witness powder production towards the end of the process. So essentially what happened here, guys, is I wanted to know what will happen if we just leave the cell running and don't do anything until major problems appear. I had to know this. We can't just guess when we got 50,000 liters of electrolyte going. Um, and another thing I think may have happened, I believe the carbon filter removed copper from the electrolyte. And why wouldn't it? It's activated carbon. It removes uh, dissolved gold particles. Why wouldn't it remove copper? I don't think it's selective like that. Um, one way to find that out is to simply run some copper sulfite through a filter loop. Or just let this thing run for 60 hours without any electrolysis to see if it... You can see the difference in color. This is the cyclone trap. And it's blue and this is my flow gauges so it definitely leached her pretty good there there's a lot of muck at the bottom of this I would imagine so I just had to show you that because I'm very excited to see that that corroborates an idea that me and you discussed that I will not elaborate on so now we know what not to do, and we needed to know that. Um, I know that the system should be monitored as it's running. Like, you're supposed to constantly be checking your electrolyte levels. But I'm glad I did that because then we got this weird activity where it went through several different phases and created some different stuff, which is nice. So, from now on, the carbon filter is going to be something that we want to use to clear up the electrolyte. And then as soon as it's clear, shut it off. 
Okay, fellas, we're gonna bust out Muhammad's 10 kilowatt oxy hydrogen torch and see if we could melt one of these platinum looking nodules off of this thing and see what the bead looks like. See if it still shines when it's done. This is the hydrogen torch. And this is the massive electrolyzer that's gonna produce oxy hydrogen gas. To uh, pull that off so we're gonna try and melt one of these little beads of this strange metal off of here um, it's definitely got a shinier color than everything else and I'm just I don't know what's going on there about 15 20 liters per minute here Let's see if we can melt these black nodules off of the pyramid cone there's been some type of separation of the metal here that was somewhat um, illuminated, if you will, by the hydrodialysis process. You could not see this before, but a layer of the copper has been eaten off, and what's been left behind is this uh, strange bead of metal that is shiny when you uh, scrape it, and it has a black oxide on it. I'm not sure what it is. We ran the test for 60 hours and we're gonna talk about what happened. Um, one of the strange things that I noticed right away are these very odd black spheres that are appearing on top of the cone ingots. Um, this one's got a really prominent one. We're gonna to try to pick that off with a chisel, but just very weird. Now these have tarnished just a little bit in the uh, air they looked a lot better than this when i first pulled them out you can see they were dissolving i stopped the process because passivation started to occur on the products in the basket it needs more agitation and i also discovered that these very small pieces is not a very good idea unless you have extremely high flow passing through them so we're probably going to want to stick with items around this size maybe i don't know yet for sure or something at least this size to start with because these smaller items become kind of clumped up they do appear to continue dissolving but i've seen so much anode sludge in there it just makes me think it would be better you can see where it's been dissolving the most It'll be shiny at that point. For 60 hours without doing anything to our electrolyte, this is what we ended up with. And at that point, we began to cause a lot of problems. We started to liberate some gas. That is also when the anode basket will start to eat itself. But in this particular case, that did not happen, as far as I can tell. Now, I weighed this with wires connected to it. So obviously the wires were touching the ground also so the weight comes out a little bit differently every time so i'm not 100 percent conclusive it actually weighed more this time than in way out so i'm attributing that to the wires we're going to weigh it again uh, we just weighed this thing i believe oh hell what i just tell you it's 634 grams yeah, that's what I got wrote down here. At any rate, let's talk about what happened. The amount of flaking that was inside of there, I just feel like we need something to blast the anode sludge away instantly, or maybe have some pumps set on a cycle. But uh, yeah, drastic difference in electrolyte there. Now, the worst part of all, let me show you the plates. This is what happened to the plates. They were covered with powder, except for this one. I'm wondering if, if this is some of the nickel. This is the cathode. Man, this dendrite is hard as a rock. 
nice and shiny underneath there. So I would imagine we were making some good shiny copper for a while there. This thing is extremely heavy. I am going to weigh them. Unfortunately, a bunch of this stuff was sprayed off when I removed the acid. You can see here that we started to produce a powder and I'm not sure why yet, but I'm looking into it. It looks like a bunch of iron is in there. This stuff is green. Yeah, that green material, I don't know if that's like a, a nickel hydroxide or something. Very strange green material on top of a clean copper sheet from what I can tell. Yeah, the copper underneath is very bright. So I'm going to have to, I know that uh, nickel hydroxide is green. Yeah, the copper underneath that looks really clean. So this is what happened when we started to electro wine the electrolyte itself. We're going to try it with the record button this time, see if that helps. No, you couldn't. But there is a different shine to each piece. Let me try something. Is that doing anything? No. Okay, they look the same under that light. Let me try a different light here. This stuff has a little bit more of a gold tinge to it, and this is a shinier metal, is what I'm able to see here. If I could polish that up, you'd really, let's do that. This is gold, this is silver. Same thing with that other little bead there, so. What is going on there and do we care? Let's see what happens here. This thing's really hot, so this could get ugly. This is some hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that might be fizzling just because it's hotter than fire. Let's try a cold piece. See if we get a different reaction. Oops, she ain't in the camera. If there are any chemists laughing at me right now, give me a break, man. It's the only acid I got. I don't have anything exciting yet. It's on the way, though. All right, nothing to write home about what's going on here. We'll have to discuss what's going on here. Shoot some theories out there. I also need to try some different cleaning methods. Definitely going to try uh, Delicious the Blair's idea, which is just a simple vibration mechanism connected to this container with a little bit of, of external flow. That may be sufficient to knock away all of the anode sludge. If that doesn't quite do it, I'm thinking about going with some ultrasonic transducers.